no matter the location. From OAK LA to LV, I'm a Raider. Today's news and rumors around the Las Vegas Raiders is presented by Manscaped. Go to manscaped.com slash Raiders where you're going to be able to save 20% off and get free shipping. I'm telling you right now, I use Manscaped to take care of my chucky head. I also use it on my nails. Go check out their new product, the Shears 2.0, because I think we all know Raiders games can, uh, they can be a little bit of a nail biter here and there. All right, let's dive into the news here. The Raiders, they are down to 80 players so they needed to get down to 80 by august 16th they cut seven guys on monday plus you know jeremiah Velaga and dj killings they decided to opt out the final note i've changed three times in the last 10 minutes the raiders have just cut pj hall after he failed his physical with the vikings we did put a show on the channel yesterday shout out to tom shout out to harrison for filling in for me while i was in vegas but basically the trade that was supposed to happen it actually, it actually originated that the Raiders were going to release P.J. Hall, and then we got more details that, okay, the Raiders, they were going to trade him to the Minnesota Vikings. In return, the Raiders were going to get a 2021 seventh-round conditional pick. So what exactly happened was P.J. Hall failed his physical, and then unfortunately that means the Raiders, they no longer get the 2021 seventh-round pick. So that entire trade is voided. And the Raiders then shortly after, about, I'll say, 10, 15 minutes ago, decided to cut Hall because, again, he did not show up and uh, in shape. The seven Monday cuts, just in case you missed them, Jordan Brown, Paul Butler, Dominic Eberly, and then Eric Magnuson. I think out of all those players, it's not too big of a surprise. Now some other cuts, Liam McCullough, the long snapper from Ohio State, UDFA, Anthony Ratliff-Williams, another player, and then Markel Lee. Mark Kelly was cut because he failed his physical as well. So he was unhealthy. Last season, he battled a lot of injuries as well. So he ultimately gets the cut. Look for now two players, especially to really step up. Look for rookie Tanner Muse and sleeper, okay, UDFA Javen White. So look for Javen White also in there. So the next player that I'm going to talk about, and if I don't have it, it's all good, Devontae Booker. Real quick, Devontae Booker has been now added off the COVID list, so he's going to be good to go. Look for him to get some reps in, also compete with a guy like Jeremy Hill. So let's get into some Chucky heads now, shall we? This one kind of breaks my heart a little bit, and uh, Mark Davis, the Raiders, not lighting the Al Torch. This one is two Chucky heads, and people are talking. So if you remember, if you watch the show, I talked about this one two weeks ago, and I'm just going to bring it up again because I've actually surprised the amount of people not talking about this. So remember, Mark Davis said, if no fans are going to be at the games, look for the Raiders to have, in quotes, a soft opening for the team's first season. He wants to do it big. He wants to celebrate a big season. And if there's not fans there, we know Mark really wants the fans in those first six rows. He's made that very, very prevalent. So with the fact that there's no fans, the fact that he's not going to have this, it sounds awful, but hey, Manscaped, Hard opening, you can see the quote below, I don't even know if we'll light the torch. When you think about lighting the torch, the Al Davis torch, I just it's, it's upsetting because that's how it was supposed to be. But guess what? That's the world we live in now. Hopefully, hopefully everything get back to normal in 2021. So did you plan on going to Raiders games in 2020? Now that fans can't go, I want to know. Did you plan on going? Did you have season tickets? Did you have it in, you know, in the forecast like, Hey, week two against the Saints, I was going to go there. Week seven against Tom Brady and the Buccaneers, I was going to go. So give me a Y for yes or give me an N for no. Let's see here. I know tickets were expensive, believe me. I've been trying to persuade my bosses to get me to go. Um, Ernesto says no. Jeff Rogers says yes. Tony Cruz says yes. Tommy Wolf says yes. A lot of people are typing yes. Well, how about this? I promise you, I will be doing watch parties here at the Raiders Report so if you did plan on going to the game, and even if you didn't plan on going, we're going to be able to keep you as up-to-date as possible doing watch parties at the Raiders Report. And, uh, yeah, we just hit 50K subs, so I want to say thank you. If you haven't already, please type 50 in the comment section below because if it wasn't for the nation, if it wasn't for how wild y'all are, we would have never hit the 50K mark. So if you could, please also let me know when you subscribe. I'm going to go after this video. I'm going to check it out. I'm going to see who's been here for the longest. Might be, uh, maybe have something special for you. So, oh, before I forget, if you go to the community tab on the YouTube channel, I have a 
uh, post up there. Let me know what we should do to celebrate 50. Cool? All right, we'll keep it moving. All right, so the Raiders, they don't need Jadeveon Clowney. That's not from me. This one's from Arden Key. But I'm going to give it only one Chucky head, and I think it's a small shred of truth because, you know, we, we I've even ripped on Clowney a lot. I've said that the Raiders, you know, potentially shouldn't go out and get him if it costs too much money. But let's get one thing straight. Jadeveon Clowney is a very good player. And could the Raiders use him? Yes. When I really look at their weaknesses, defensive and edge rusher still is there. But Key just basically says, you know, we got everything we need in that defensive line room. We don't need nobody else. We don't need no Jadeveon Clowney. We don't need none of that. You guys can fill in the words. S-H it. So when I think about all that, I'm like, okay, you know, Arden, I, I can understand why you're saying that because let's just get it straight. If Clowney comes in and Arden Key is, you, you might as well just cut him. You, sure, it's going to cost you 413 k but you add Clowney with Furl, Crosby, you brought in Carl Nassib, he's going to be able to help, right? I mean, you can say he might screw some things up in the locker room, but he's going to help on the field, and he's going to at least bring some intensity. Yes, I still would only sign him to a one-year deal. Maybe get him for 12, 13, 14, maybe 15 million a year. But at one-year deal for a player that is as good as Jadeveon, it's a player that, yes, the Raiders could definitely need. And sure, you're going to look at the sacks. The sacks, he had only three. But I want you to look at the pressures, the hurries, the hits. And if you really want to dethrone Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs, you need to be able to do it with a lot more talent on that defensive line, not just being able to get after the quarterback. But also, Clowney is actually a pretty solid player against the run. So Arden Key says, you know what, ma'am? We don't need Jadeveon Clowney. So you know what I'm going to do? That's what the Raiders report does. I'm going to ask all of y'all who are watching this video right now. Do the Raiders need Jadeveon Clowney type 1 for yes or type 2 for no? For those of you that are watching this video on YouTube, I'm going to make this the pinned comment. So while that ad is playing, I want you to scroll on down and let me know. Do the Raiders need Jadeveon Clowney? Quote time. This one's from uh, John Gruden on the third-year defensive lineman. They have to prove they belong in this league. Arden's got to stay healthy. P.J. Hall, I'm anxious to see where his weight is. He came in overweight last year. Not that position. Can't happen. All, obviously, P.J. Hall's already gone. We know that Arden Key needs to stay healthy, and he's also challenging Mo Hurst in this. I like the fact that they're challenging them. That's what I want to see. But why am I bringing up this quote? Because Arden Key, he's making the show again. Does Arden Key have... I guess I should say has. Arden Key has a Chucky doll, okay? This one, his four Chucky heads, believe it, baby. I mean, I got to do it. If you haven't seen this story yet, this one makes me chuckle a little bit. So basically, Key has a Chucky doll to help remind himself that he's got to deal with John Gruden and camp and for the entire season. His quote around what he's trying to do this year is, well, kind of interesting. So if Key wants to keep his job, he thinks the best way to do it is by getting underneath John Gruden's skin. So here's this quote. If I get under John Gruden's skin and I see that he turns red every day, oh, I'm winning. I'm not looking at no Tom Brady or no Drew Brees right now. My main eyes are on John Gruden. What I take from that quote is he is just trying to impress the head coach. He's just trying to impress the coaching staff because if he does that, and he does that right now, he's going to get more playing time. And you can say what you want about Arden Key. It has not been, I'll say, pretty his first two years slid all the way to the third round off field concerns and I would say that's been true but if there is one thing that I do know about Key he does bring a lot of talent and if he does play to his full potential and I know John Gruden right now has just come out and said that he also thinks that Arden Key is going to thrive in Rod Marinelli's system if all that's true we're going to get a great player but I've also seen Arden Key the past two years hopefully he can put it together in this upcoming season so how many sacks for Arden Key in 2020 I want you all to start typing right now in the comments if you're watching this live. If you watch this a little bit later on, let's say, Tuesday night, maybe Wednesday, I will go down and I'll see how many sacks y'all are predicting for Arden Key. So let me know. Come on. What do we got here? What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? I see Jeremy Wiley says three. Lucas Rojas says five. Jason Marshall, four. Tony Cruz, 5.5. Aiden Saz says four. Six from Jeremiah. How many sacks for Arden Key? If you're looking for the perfect sack, or maybe the perfect package, I got you covered. Get the perfect package, 20% off, and get free shipping. 
thanks to today's sponsor, Manscaped. All you got to do to take advantage of this deal is go to manscaped.com slash Raiders, where again, you will get 20% off and free shipping. One of my favorite products is the one that you see on screen right now, the Lawnmower 3.0. That comes included in the perfect package. You also get unbelievably comfortable boxers. You get this traveling case, and I just went to Las Vegas. It worked perfectly, even though my toothpaste kind of exploded. Thanks, Heat. You also get ball deodorant. You also get ball toner. I'm telling you right now, it's called the perfect package because your package will be perfect with it. It'll be in the comments. It's in the description. Go show Manscaped that y'all watch the show and that you appreciate it and that you're trying to take care of your Chucky head. Because that's all I'm trying to do for you. Manscaped, get the perfect package, 20% off and free shipping. All right, we got three more rumors. We'll roll through these rather quickly. Cleveland Furl looks bigger. Probably because he uses Manscaped. No, but seriously, four Chucky heads, believe it, baby. Cleveland, my man is bulking up a little bit, and I really want you to take credit, or I want you to look at the rumor source here. It's my eyeballs, because if you haven't seen pictures of Clee, go ahead, look it up. So remember, all the way back at the end of May, he said that he added 13 pounds during an 18-week off-season regimen. He wanted to get up to 275. Why? Because last season he started at 262, lost 15 pounds due to food poisoning in week five when he went to London, and now, and he's been saying for a while, you probably won't even recognize me. Now, Clee, I'll be honest. I, I recognize you. You know, you're wearing your jersey number. It's pretty easy. But you're looking to build off of your rookie season. And when you're drafted fourth overall, you need to put up more numbers than what we saw. And for anybody that watches Cleveland's tape, you know, at Clemson, you know that he at least has the ability to do it. I think for a lot of players, you go from college, especially when you're putting up numbers like this, to the NFL, it's confidence. And I think every man, heck, every woman that's watching this right now, if you've ever had your confidence taken away, it's really hard to get back into the rhythm. With a heavier Cleveland Furl at 275 who put on some muscle, has some extra confidence, look for him to have a much better season in his sophomore year. So how many sacks for Clee in 2020? Y'all put in your comments for Arden Key. So now let me know. How many sacks for the second year, okay? How many sacks in the second year? I got Mario is going to go 12. Tony Cruz says eight. Angel Vasquez says eight. Seven, eight, ten, ten and a half, seven. Average votes coming in right now, 8.5 sacks. So let me know how many sacks for Klee. And if y'all want to put this on Twitter, go ahead, share it. And if you want to at Klee, ask him himself, I'd be totally down. I'll retweet it. Next rumor on today's show, John Gruden and Mike Mayock use Manscaped. This one I'm going to give two Chucky heads people are talking. I was in Las Vegas, and I was like, Mike Mayock, John Gruden? Hey, pretty uh, pretty good-looking guys. I'm sure they use Manscaped. But until I get full confirmation, I can't give it for Chucky heads. So I'm going to ask all y'all, help me out a little bit. Who do you think is more likely to use Manscaped? Do you think it's John Gruden type G, or do you think it's Mike Mayock type M? So G or M, if I had to honestly guess... I think it would be Gruden because I think Mayock is just a little bit old school. Somebody said tucked out on both. Well, hey, if you're looking to get Manscaped, Gruden, or Mayock, I got you covered. Go manscaped.com slash Raiders. You're going to get 20% off and get free shipping. We're just trying to take care of head coaches, general managers, because if you're feeling good down there, I'm a big believer. Feel good, play good, coach good, manage good. That's what it's all about. Just win, baby. All right, last rumor here on today's show. Jeremy Hill, is he going to make the final roster? I'm going to give this one only one Chucky head, and it's a very, very small shred of truth. And when I saw this one come across, I, I was actually surprised on the amount of people that were like, is Josh Jacobs okay? Is he going to take playing time away from Josh Jacobs? No. I mean, Jeremy Hill has no business taking any kind of reps away from Jacobs. It's more he's going to come in, he's going to compete, and the reason why the Raiders ultimately went out and signed Hill was – you remember Devontae Booker who now has been activated from the COVID list he was put on the reserve COVID-19 list and they just wanted to bring in an extra body plus at 236 pounds the Raiders for a long time probably about two years now since Chris Warren have been looking for that power running back Jeremy Hill at 236 you got Rod Smith at about 245 right now plus you could bring in another bigger running back as well with Lynn Bowden from Kentucky you know, you're just you're doing a lot of different things. And, oh, yeah, they also have William Stanback, another guy from the CFL. So a lot of big-bodied running backs. But for me, I think they're only going to keep three, plus then Alec Ingold make that four. Maybe they keep an extra running back for depth or on the practice squad. But if you were John Gruden, 
If you were Mike Mayock, and at, right after you got done using the lawnmower 3.0, because obviously you manscaped, if you had to make a tougher decision, who would you keep? Jeremy Hill type JH? Would you keep Devontae Booker, DB? Rod Smith, RS? Or William Stamback, WS? So you can only keep one, okay? Let's make that obvious. You can only keep one. JH for Jeremy Hill, Devontae Booker, Rod Smith, William. And if you want to know what I think, hit me up on Instagram at MitchellRens365. Raider Nation, what's going on? Is this the number one Raiders channel on YouTube? For Chucky Heads, believe it, baby. And if you haven't already, subscribe right here. I'm giving you Chucky Heads news, rumors, Raider Nation rumors. And look at this. I'm making your life easier. Check out my next video. Thanks for watching, and go Raiders.